Hello and a very warm welcome to another edition of Talking Germany, the show where we do just that. Now, nearly everybody, of course, has heard of the huge Oktoberfest that takes place in the Bavarian capital of Munich each and every year. Now, at the uh, heart of this massive festival of beer, food, music and revelry are the huge beer tents. And it all starts in the legendary Schottenhammer tent, where the mayor of Munich traditionally taps the very first keg. Well, together with his cousin, the man who runs that tent is Peter Schottenhammer, and he is our guest today. Thank you very, very much for joining us today. Thank you for being here. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, let's begin at the very beginning. What, what is the Oktoberfest and how did it all begin? The Oktoberfest is the biggest beer fest in the world. It started uh, 200 years ago when a Bavarian prince married a princess from Saxonia. Mm -hmm. And because of this marriage, they made a big horse race. Because a the horse race? Horse race, yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> and uh, the Munich population, they liked this horse race so much that they got the idea to do it every year. Mm -hmm. And f what uh, if you do an event like this, the variants, they are thirsty, they are hungry. <laughs> so one got the idea and said, OK, I sell beer and I sell something to eat. And uh, this started uh, approximately the year 1867, when, beside others, my great-grandfather mm -hmm. got the idea to run a place on the Oktoberfest. They made a, uh, they opened the ground to get water to wash the mugs. And uh, they had no, uh, it was not a real uh, tent. It was just a place where you could sit down and eat and drink. And this ended in the, by the end of 1800, we had the first tent with 8,000 people. Mm -hmm. We were the first one who had electric light and there's a very nice story mm -hmm. uh, the f the company who started uh, the electricity in our tent was a company called einstein and key two brothers from augsburg and they had a son uh, called einstein too and he in his uh, holidays he was a student he put um, uh, bulbs. Bulbs. This is the Einstein. The Albert Einstein. Go he on. earned money uh -huh. and put bulbs. Uh, <laughs> and we have in a tent like now, we have about 10,000 bulbs. That would have been so, hard work for so Mr. Einstein. So he had a good job. Yeah. <laughs> but this is a very nice story what happened. <laughs> Wonderful. Peter Schottenhammel, did my colleague who did that report uh, in the English version, did he get it right with, or zapft ist, was his pronunciation good? Yes, it was yeah. perfect. That's a big yeah. moment, isn't yes, it? Yes, yes. It's, it's, it's a big honour for you that it takes yeah. place in your tent. We yeah. had uh, one uh, Lord Mayor who forgot to say, or ist. Really? When was that? It was about, uh, before Obe Ude, yeah. about, I think about ten years ago. Oh, yeah. And what happened? They didn't uh, elect him again. <laughs> <laughs> so it's the mayor who does. How difficult is it? How many how many goes do they need normally? Well, uh, our Lord Mayor Udenau, he mm. makes it with two. Really, he could. He's make had it. a lot of practice, hasn't he? He's been in office for quite a while. Yes, yeah? yes. And uh, I think each of them they uh, started to prove it before. First, they take an empty barrel. Mm -hmm. Then they take a barrel with water, filled oh, yeah. with water, oh, yeah. and then they have a barrel <laughs> filled with beer. And uh, because it can be a mess. And it's it a happens. question of honour, isn't it? It's a question of yes, honour. So that's, the, that's what the Lord Mayor does. The ordinary people in your tent, how do they spend the evening? Is it, is it just a beer festival or there's, there's more to it than that, isn't there? Well, they, they stand on the banks, they dance, <laughs> they sing, mm. they enjoy their time. Yeah. And they enjoy, of course, our good lovely Bavarian beer. Okay. And how difficult is it to get a seat in your tent? It's not so easy. If you come in uh, at lunchtime, it's very easy to get a seat. Usually... Oh, you can just turn up and walk go, in, more Just or walk in, it's oh. plenty, plenty uh -huh. of place. Mm -hmm. uh, just after four o'clock, it's hot. We mm -hmm. have about 6,000 seats inside mm -hmm. and 2,000 seats are not reserved. Uh -huh. But if you come about four o'clock, three o'clock, you won't find a seat empty. Just those seats which are reserved because these people, they come at four, half past four. Okay. So it's a lot of people who come to your yeah. tent, yeah? Uh, uh, 
a lot of people have been looking at Germany recently with great sadness and great concern because of the events in Duisburg around the Love Parade Music yeah. Festival where there were a yeah. number of deaths, obviously. Yeah. There must be a lot of concern on your part. I know that you organise these things very well, but you must have been thinking about it again since Duisburg. Of course we think yeah. about it, but you can't compare it. Mm. The place where the Oktoberfest takes part is a big, big place, and there are plenty of possibilities to leave this place. You just don't. You just have just one little entrance where you move in and out. Yeah. I don't think uh, that a thing like this can happen on Oktoberfest. Mm. There's been a lot of discussion this time round. Uh, you Bavarians, you're very independent-minded people, and one way that that's expressed itself is that Bavaria has been very easygoing on smoking laws, much more easygoing than other parts of Germany. But now that's all changed. Now the laws have become much more strict. There was a there was a talk for a while that that wasn't going to apply to the Oktoberfest. Yeah. What's the the latest situation there? Well. It, uh, the new law uh, about smoking started on the 1st of August. August, of course, this year, Oktoberfest, it's no smoking. But the uh, police and uh, officials told us they won't uh, fine us this year. We have to make uh -huh. exercise or practice <laughs> how we will handle this next year. Yeah. And this is really not easy okay. because there won't a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the people who turn up in your tent. We've mentioned already a lot of young people, a lot of yeah. students, is yeah. that, yeah? yeah? Politicians? Of course, politicians. Do they just come along for the photo op or do they stay? Of course, they stay too. Yeah? They stay too. They, they, drink. they enjoy it. <laughs> they drink a lot? They of behave course. badly? Of course. Of course. <laughs> That's another way to get your name in the... Uh... One, one, uh, one <laughs> opening of Oktoberfest, Mr. Hurst. Uh -huh. The English minister. Oh, ah, yeah. He came uh -huh. and he stayed about four or five hours. Uh -huh. And he liked it. There you go. Yeah. Well, um, as I mentioned at the beginning of the show, we've just been talking about young people. Young people in Munich are very, very chic indeed, I can tell you. And during the Oktoberfest, chic means Dirndl and Lederhosen. So how many pairs of Lederhosen do you have? Well, I have uh, one pair yeah. long, yeah. then I have um, three knick knickerbockers. Knickerbockers. And then I have two short ones. You have two pairs above your knees? Yes. Do you, yes. Have, good, do you have good knees? Of course. Yeah. And what we say, uh, <laughs> what, what's very important, good wadl. Oh, a good, a good calf. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's very interesting. That's very traditional. Yeah. In, in other countries, that was in the 19th century. That was very important to have good calves. Yeah. yeah? yeah. Um, the young people who are getting dressed up these yeah. days, are they doing it just for fun or are they doing it because they've begun to have a sort of a new sense of tradition and what have you? Uh, in Bavaria, it's part of, of life, in the, especially in the countryside. On, uh, when people on Sundays go to church, they go in Tracht. Yeah. They have dirndl. So a traditional and, costume. Yeah. yeah, traditional costume. Yeah. And this is uh, even in the cities. And uh, Oktoberfest, it's a Bavarian fest. It's an old fest. Yeah. So they have, of course, traditional clothes on You've been going to the uh, the Oktoberfest for you've been involved directly in yeah. the Oktoberfest for for decades now. What's been the biggest change in that period? I, I would say about uh, 20, 25 years ago, uh, the young people invented Oktoberfest new. Oh, before yeah. the average age yeah. in the tent was about I would say 35 to 40, 45. Mm -hmm. Now it's 20, 25. Mm. And it's it's in how it's, we say it's youth culture. Youth culture. Oh yeah. wow! Yeah. yeah and yeah. what about foreign visitors? The, when, when did that really take off? That lots and lots of foreigners would be coming oh, to the October since, Fest. Since, since years. Since yeah? years. And you get a lot of foreign visitors in your tent. I, I would I would say about in our tent, seventy five percent comes from Munich, mm. fifteen percent comes from uh, Bavaria, and then maybe uh, ten percent from Germany and ten percent abroad. Mm -hmm. And in, in your tent, you're, you're the Viet, what the Germans call the Viet, you're the host. Yes. Yeah? But you can't go around to all of these uh, thousands of people and look after them individually. How do you make sure that they are being looked after? We have a TV in our office and, oh. we, have, <laughs> and we have 12 cameras oh, yeah. in the tent and in the garden to look what's happened, yeah. to look if the, if the walking passes are full or not yeah. and to look what's happened. But and sometimes I go even and say hello to some people, to some guests, 
especially on the opening when the city of Munich yeah. invites uh, about 400, 500 people for the opening. Yeah. Of course, I go to the, ta to the tables too. Great stuff, yeah. <laughs> We're going to talk about a couple more aspects of Bavarian culture, both of which are, of course, found in abundance at the Oktoberfest, and they are Weisswurst and Weissbier. It's 10 o'clock in Bavaria and time for a breakfast of veal sausage, sweet mustard and wheat beer, also known as Bavarian cappuccino. The beer is served in tall, narrow glasses. It tastes fresh and bubbly and is brewed according to centuries-old rules guaranteeing purity. The veal sausage is also strictly regulated. It's nine centimeters long and is made mostly of finely ground veal and parsley. A quarter of a million of them are sold in and around Munich every day. And tradition has it that they should all be eaten by 11 in the morning. Eating the white sausage is considered by some an art form. Locals like the suckling method. They bite the end off and suck out the meat. Experts know a more elegant method. You poke a hole in the front and cut across the sausage. But don't cut all the way through. Then you press the skin to the plate with a knife and twist the meat out. After you poke the open side of the sausage, cut across it, again don't cut right through. Press it down and twist the next bit out. You eat other food with a knife and fork and you do the same thing with veal sausage. But however they're eaten, Bavarians love their specialities. Well, well, well. Peter Schottenhammel and I were just looking at the, that demonstration of how to eat or how not to eat vice versa. I would, I would eat it with a knife and fork. I'm that kind of person. You, 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 were, you, you would laugh at me for doing that. No, no. You have, uh, <laughs> the vice versa is something anyone can eat it the way he wants it. Oh. And how do no. you do it? Go on. Well, I, I take a fork and a knife and I cut it in the middle and yeah. then I... Uh, make a little um, a slit, down slit the edge. Yeah. and then I turn it out. Uh -huh. That's the easiest way. Uh, otherwise, you can, what we say, tootsle it out. What does that mean, that? <laughs> Just like that kind this. of noise. <laughs> Perfect, too. <laughs> Weisswurst and Weissbier is the best after a long night, and especially when you have a, have a hangover. I see, I see. And this thing about the Weisswurst that you've got to, you, you shouldn't let the, the, the white sausage hear the chimes of midday. Is that, is that still true today? No. Nah. This used to be when we didn't have frigidus. Yeah. Now we have frigidus and uh, you can eat all day long. But you, you can remember this as a boy of in course, Bavaria in your little leader yeah, yeah. and being seven years old, having your vice yeah, as an course. early morning yeah, yeah, snack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah? Yeah, yeah. Well, what, what, is the th what, what is the connection between Bavaria and beer anyway? What's the, what's the big connection there? Well, the first German brewery started in the year 1000, mm -hmm. and it was in Freising. Which is near Munich? Yeah. It's close to Munich, yeah. 40 kilometers, kilometers away from Munich in um, Weinstefan. Mm -hmm. And in 1516, we had the so-called Bavarian Purity Law, mm -hmm. which was taken over by the Deutsches Reich. Which still applies which today. still applies today, which is a guarantee that our beer, especially Bavarian beer, of course, is the best beer in the world. Mm. Bavaria, you're talking about Bavarian history there. Bavaria likes to project itself as a very, as, as a place of tradition and modernity. There's a, the, the catchphrase that everybody uses is Lederhose and laptop. Yeah. Is that just publicity or is it really Bavaria? I think it's really Bavaria. Mm -hmm. And we say the Oktoberfest is a lovely mixture of high tech and tradition. Ooh. It's the same. <laughs> we saw you in that report at the beginning. You, you, had a, you had a big mass of beer at the end of the evening. Yeah. Is that, that, that's really you? 
That's, that's really, the disciplined that's, Peter Schottenkammer. That's really me. Uh -huh. I take this beer <laughs> and it takes me half an hour. Uh -huh. Slowly, slowly, I drink it and then I go home. Okay. And that's a guarantee too <laughs> that I sleep well. Super. <laughs> he's a very, he's been telling me, he's a very sporty fellow, he's a very disciplined fellow. We're going to talk about that in just a second. <laughs> While Peter Schottenhammel was watching that film, he uttered the same German word twice, the German word for incredible, unbelievable. He said, Wahnsinn, Wahnsinn. Yeah, it, it's, it's amazing, isn't it? Yes. Yeah? Yeah? I know you're a big opera fan. Are you going to yes. go along and watch that movie? No. No? I don't think so. I think I get, uh, I get old. You get old any, anyway. Any, anyway and can watch myself in the mirror. Ah, very wise, very wise, yeah. Um, you are, though... Um, you're the kind of person who sets himself new challenges, I have the feeling, yeah? What new challenges have you got for the future? Well, it's very easy to say, to stay, to stay like I am, because mm. I feel great, I feel good, well, I like... What, what sports do you do? Swimming, uh -huh. uh, in winter skiing, yeah. scuba diving. Ooh. I have two big dogs, yeah. going with the dogs, mm -hmm. and... Uh, but during the season, you must work, well, during the Oktoberfest, you, not, you, you work from morning till night. No time for anything. Yeah. The and these, these people, tell me, the, the, the women who, uh, who actually carry the beer, yeah. that, that looks like a bit of a sport. You need good muscles and a lot of good technique. Of course, of course. How, how, uh, what's, the, what's the largest number, that, on, generally speaking, of uh, mass beer okay, things generally, that uh, I, from, For example, I can carry 12. Full. You can carry 12. Yes. Yeah. And the good waitress can carry 12 too. Mm -hmm. I think uh, the average is 10. Mm -hmm. And uh, anything what's over 12, it's uh, too, too heavy. If you just do it for a picture, they okay. can carry 16, 16 or 18. But 12, 12. But, 12 but uh, is... just for two meters. Uh -huh. 12, it's easy. I see. Um, in the dossier I got about you, Peter Schottenhammer yeah. had said he is always optimistic. Yes. Are you optimistic about the future of the Oktoberfest? Of you course, must be. Of yeah? course. Of you course. have every reason to be. I yeah? think it's, it's, I'm not the person who wakes up in the morning and say what's going to happen wrong today. I, I say everything will be good. I'm going to ask you three quick quiz questions. Yes. Yeah? We have a quiz at the end. Are you a German or a Bavarian? I'm first Bavarian and second German. <laughs> In fact, I'm going to reduce it to just one more question. Is Bavaria a place of the past or a place of the future? Bavaria is a place of past and future. I knew he was going to say that. Mr. Oktoberfest, Peter Schottenhammel, he's been our guest. If you've enjoyed his company as much as I have, come back next week. Until then, tschüss.